This week's Torah portion, Parshat B'chukotai, has a section in it called the Tochacha. This is an expanded segment where God and Moses describe to the Israelites what will happen in the future once the Israelites reach the land of Israel, if, should, and when they fail to uphold all of God's commandments. It's a very sad, very scary, depressing segment. And at the conclusion of it, God says that God will ultimately remember the Israelites to redeem them. This is Leviticus chapter 26, verse 42. I will remember my covenant with Jacob. I will also remember my covenants with Isaac. I will remember my covenant with Abraham. And I will remember the land. This verse becomes central to Jewish thought, Jewish liturgy. We say it several times during the high holiday season. But Rashi is going to pick up on one sort of very small piece of this verse, namely the spelling of Yaakov, the spelling of Jacob. Yaakov is usually spelled throughout the Torah, Yud, Ayin, Kuf, Bet. But here in this verse, it's spelled Yud, Ayin, Kuf, Vav, Bet. And that's what Rashi is going to pick up on. Bechamisha mekomos nichtav male. In five places in the Torah, Jacob, Yaakov, is spelled with the additional vav, the full spelling. Ve'eliyahu chaser bechamisha mekomot. Now this is very interesting. He notes that Elijah the prophet, Eliyahu, his name is spelled throughout the Torah when he's mentioned in the book of Kings. With He's spelled with a vav, but in five places his name, Eliyahu, the, Eliyahu Elijah the prophet, is spelled without a vav. So what do we do with the fact that five times Jacob's name is spelled with a vav and five times Eliyahu's name is spelled without a vav? Says Rashi, Yaakov natal ot mishemo shel Eliyahu. Jacob, who lived hundreds and hundreds of years before Elijah, took one of the vavs from Elijah's name, Eravon, as collateral. Shiavo v'yivaser ge'ulat banav. That one day Elijah will come, and pronounce and proclaim the salvation of the Israelite people, the Jewish people. This is based on, on the idea that Elijah the prophet will be the person who one day, however you understand this metaphorically, symbolically, literally, uh, will come to proclaim and announce the Messianic era for the Jewish people. So we've been reading the Maharal, the Maharal Super Commentary on Rashi, the Gur Aryeh, he, this is already a fascinating Midrash on its own, and he's going to add his own uh, insights. Piresh Hara'em says the Mizrahi, another commentator, Ki hatam chamesh, why is it that it's five times that Jacob's name is spelled with a vav and Elijah's is, take, is spelled without a vav? Tahave ki'ilu nishba bechamisha chum Torah, shi'avo v'yigalotam. It's as if... Jacob made Elijah swear on the Bible, on the five books. We know that the the first the, Mo, the five books of Moses, the Chumash, there's five of them. So it's like you could say it's like today in uh, America, there's swearing on a Bible to tell the whole truth, truth, the whole truth, but the truth. So too, Jacob, as it were, made Elijah swear on the Torah, say, one day you'll come and announce salvation for my children. Says the Maharal, Ein zetam. That doesn't make any sense. To Kevan, to Natal Ot Mishmoshel Eliyahu, Le'eravon, Lama Hayatzarek Shavua. If he already took the five, says the Midrash says he took five vavs as collateral, then why do I also need him to, to swear on the Torah? And vice versa, if he had to swear on the Torah, why did I have to take the five vavs as collateral? So I have another idea. Yesh lo mar ki hanoten eravon noten lo kaf yad. One who takes collateral also has to have a handshake agreement. And he quotes a verse in Proverbs which testifies to that. V'yesh chamisha etzbaot bekaf hayad. And how many fingers do we have on our hand? Five, most people. L'kach natal bechamisha mekomot havav. That is why in five places the vav was taken from Eliyahu's name and given to Elijah. Ki'ilu kafo. Shehu chamisha etzbaot. It's like the five fingers of his hand. Heim etzel Yaakov. And it's like they shook hands. Va etzba doma You could even say the entire hands 
looks like a vav. Lekach vav min Eliyahu chaser v'hu natuna liyakov. That's why the vav of Elijah was taken and given to Jacob, and he cites some other another idea which supports this. So it's a beautiful idea. Uh, first of all, the Midrash itself is beautiful, that there's a promise to the Jewish people that in the future we will be redeemed. That's what the Torah says. And the Midrash expands upon this and based here and says, Jacob, our forefather, Jacob, whose name was also Israel, the great sort of patriarch of all Jews today, along with Abraham and Isaac, also mentioned in this verse, uh, that Jacob forces Elijah to promise that one day we will all be redeemed and we see it through the vav in the names. And it's as if there's a handshake agreement between Jacob and Elijah. It's a beautiful illustration. And the Maharal goes on to say that Elijah's name, Elijah, who really represents salvation, his name will never be truly full. He won't get that vav back until we are redeemed. Let it be soon. Always a pleasure learning with you. More next week.